29th? I thought we had the best medical care in the world. Well, according to the World Health Organization, Centers for Disease Control, and other independent agencies, in fact, we fall behind all the other industrialized nations and even behind much of the rest of the world. We lose more babies. We don't live as long, don't do as well with many major illnesses. We lose too many patients in the hospital. And every year, between 22 and 45,000 of our people die because they just can't get medical insurance. But I know that we have many excellent specialists, clinics, hospitals, and a lot of advanced technologies. Yes, I know, but only the wealthiest consistently receive the best care, and many people can't afford any care at all. So they just get sicker, spread diseases to others, including those who are insured, and end up in the ER, where we, the taxpayers, pay the bill. So denying them coverage hasn't gotten us off the hook. It's just made it more expensive for us in the long run, because emergency services are always much more expensive than preventive care. You're not going to like this slide. According to UNICEF statistics, more women die in childbirth in the USA than in other industrialized countries. I can't believe that. Well, it's true. And if they lived in Bosnia, their survival chances would be more than double their chances here. Let's look at the World Health Organization ratings for health care performance in the top 50 countries. It places us just one above Slovenia. That doesn't sound good at all. Of the 36 ranked above us, 30 have national health care systems, all of which are a form of single payer. And even with better health care, these countries keep their medical costs down to between one half to two thirds of ours. Again, the main difference is single payer. Really? Well, in fact, our health care system itself is in need of emergency treatment. And the treatment recommended for it by roughly 60% of U.S. physicians is universal single payer, or House Bill H.R. 676, otherwise known as Improved Expanded Medicare for All. Okay, okay. But I've heard that a national health plan would actually lower quality and raise costs. Remember the ratings we just saw from the World Health Organization and UNICEF? The higher quality health care in countries with universal coverage proves that the increased access to care under a universal single-payer system allows far more patients to visit the doctor on a regular basis, so problems are caught early when treatment is much less expensive. This avoids things like ER visits, emergency surgeries, dialysis, amputations, and hospitalizations, and decreases the need for emergency life-or-death decisions, so there's better patient outcome and less fear on the part of doctors regarding malpractice suits. Well, that sounds like one of those rare win-win situations. But I am concerned about the idea of Medicare for all. I heard that some doctors think that Medicare doesn't pay doctors enough, so those doctors won't take Medicare patients now. Wouldn't that limit my choice of doctors? The reality is that about 60% of all American doctors are supportive of, of Medicare for all. The facts are that Medicare has been subsidizing private health insurers like Medicare C, the private advantage plans, and Part D, the private prescription plans. These plans soak up government subsidies and patient premiums that could be used much more efficiently to improve payments to doctors and to expand traditional Medicare. If Medicare were expanded to every American, all doctors would automatically accept Medicare. All patients, everyone in the U.S., would be covered by Medicare and doctors' payments would be decided by annual negotiations between Medicare and the doctors. So the amount of money in Medicare's kitty is a political decision. For at least the last 40 years, funding to Medicare and other social programs has consistently been diverted to pay for wars and tax cuts for the wealthy and corporations. The good news is, we have some control over Medicare's funding because we vote. This is vastly better than our complete lack of any control over the private CEOs and investors of our current private system. So the fact that Medicare has been forced to cut its payments to providers is not a reflection on Medicare's efficiency, but instead it's a result of diversion of Medicare's funding by the for-profit healthcare industry and the extreme right wing. In fact, Medicare spends our money far more efficiently than any private insurance company because it doesn't have to pay profits to any investors. Okay, but I keep hearing that Medicare's premiums are going up. Why is that? 
Over the past 10 years, the cost of private premiums has increased about 12% a year, while the cost of Medicare has only increased about 46 a year. Hmm. It looks like that's only about 1 or 1.5% 1 more than the increase in overall inflation and workers' earnings on your chart. Well, that's right. And the Advantage plans actually cherry-pick the healthiest members, leaving the least healthy and most expensive for traditional Medicare to pay for hardly a level playing field. So this makes Medicare look like it's in financial trouble while it is actually one of the most stable and efficient parts of our entire health care system. Huh. So wasn't there one more thing on my list? Yes there was and that last thing on your list was benefits coverage. In addition to the usual basics office visits, hospitalizations, emergency care, shots, Single payer would cover even the things on this slide which are currently not routinely covered. Wow, my plan doesn't cover all that. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a plan that does cover all those. So, here's a slide that summarizes some of the major ways single payer could help you. You'd have no premiums or copays, there'd be no caps on your insurance, you couldn't be excluded because of a condition you already have. In fact, Nobody is excluded from a single-payer plan from the womb to the tomb. And you're covered for every medical need. Even the cost of your auto and home insurance will be reduced because single-payer eliminates the need for medical liability coverage. I have several more slides that show some of the problems caused by our current health care system that not everyone thinks about. Did you know that medical debt caused half of the one million home foreclosures in 2008? This just doesn't happen under single payer because the government pays for everyone's health care needs, so the cost and the risk are spread out evenly over the entire population of the nation. The basic concept of insurance is that the larger the pool of shared risk, the less any one person has to pay. As a matter of fact, the greatest single cause of bankruptcy in this country is medical debt. Ironically, the majority, 75%, of people who went bankrupt due to medical bills actually had private insurance coverage. Huh, that's terrible. We've been very lucky. We haven't had to declare bankruptcy and we're not at risk of losing our home. But listening to you, <laughs> I'm starting to realize how quickly that could change if one of us came down with a serious illness. Tell me, do you know any business owners who have insurance for their employees? Yes. As it happens, I do. Why do you ask? Well, because American employers have a severe disadvantage in competing with businesses based in countries with single-payer health care. You see, our competitors don't have to pay for health insurance for their employees. For example, American car manufacturers have to add hundreds of dollars of health insurance costs to every car they build. A Japanese car made in a U.S. factory costs more than that same exact car made in a factory in Japan. Single payer would obviously help discourage outsourcing of American manufacturing and other jobs overseas. That's a good point. But what about employers who are not competing with foreign companies? All those employers who currently provide insurance will have a very substantial savings, which will probably include everything on this list. Even employers who do not currently provide insurance will have greatly reduced worker comp costs, reduced liability and auto insurance costs, and many of the things listed here. And small employers will be able to compete for workers on a more level playing field because prospective employees will no longer have to take a job with the larger company just for the health benefits that the small company can't afford to offer them.